What's your name, honey? Uh, I'm Joe. I teach middle school band. Cut it, go for it! I play this jazz teacher who's sort of stuck, uh, happily stuck, but still stuck, in a job where he's teaching jazz, which is a sort of a throwback of a, of a trade when it comes to musical trade. He's teaching jazz to his, to his little, you know, his little kids in, in, in school. But Joe has always dreamed of being something else. Um, in his heart, he's a, he's a musician at heart. And since he was very young, Joe always wanted to be a professional jazz musician. You could say that jazz music is the dream that Joe's been pursuing on nights and weekends his entire adult life. There's this big gig that's coming up uh, and he wants to go play for it. And he finally goes and auditions and uh, he gets lost. And for musicians or anybody out there, when you get lost in your craft, he's just in his thing, auditioning, no nerves, he just went and they said, wow, you're great, you will have the gig. And then has a, an accident that causes his soul to leave his body and almost go to the great beyond. And so he is trying to get back into his body and back to his life. Is this heaven? <laughs> no. Is it H E double hockey sticks? Hell, 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 It's easy to get turned around. This isn't the great beyond. It's the great before. The great before? I play a character named 22 who is a soul that's never been born uh, because even though um, the people in the great before have been trying to convince her, she's had a lot of mentors trying to convince her that life is great and she should go live on earth, she uh, is very suspect of it. She thinks it sounds scary, painful, difficult, depressing, smelly. She just doesn't want any part of it. She is uh, Joe's chance if he can kind of convince her to go back then maybe he'll get a chance to go back also. Well, initially I think that character's name was 107,337,217,322. We called her 22 for short. But then in the end, we, we decided it's actually funnier if she is just 22. That's how long she's been up there. And she still wants nothing to do with Earth. You know, we thought of her a little bit. 22 is kind of like a teenager who thinks they know everything. In 22's case, she could make a pretty compelling argument that she does, because she's been looking down on Earth and taking notes for a long, long, long time. And to her, it looks like a lot of suffering and disappointment, and why, why get mixed up in that? 22 is, a, is, a, is, I would say, lack of a better word, not, not cynical, but it's like, doesn't really see the reason. She's been there quite literally thousands of years and refuses to go to Earth. She cannot get a ticket, she cannot get her Earth badge to, to change because she thinks that there's nothing good about going to Earth. So we have this situation where we have a soul who doesn't want to die being stuck with a soul who doesn't want to live. 22 has been at the U Seminar for quite some time and has had such notable mentors as Gandhi, Abraham Lincoln, and Mother Teresa. <laughs> I made her cry. Ignore that. You got the talented Tina Fey who's just, you know, I mean, come on. That, uh, her mind and the way she works is amazing. And plus she's a writer as well. You know, she started out as a writer and, um, and you know, being on Saturday Night Live. So just to be able to sort of go back and forth, even when we weren't in the same room with each other. We was only in the same room a couple of times, but just being in her presence, man, made everything, you know, elevated. Yeah, I, I read her biography and she said she spent a lot of her youth standing on the sidelines with the cool kids making fun of people. <laughs> and I think in a way that really personifies 22. She's, she doesn't want to get involved with all this messiness and drama. She wants to be on the side just judging. Jamie Foxx plays Joe Gardner and he's incredible in the movie because um, one, he's a really great actor, but also because he is a musician himself. All the parts of Joe's character that are tied to his love of music just feel really authentic uh, and connected coming from Jamie. And um, he's just super expressive with his voice. Guy can do everything. You know, he's a great dramatic actor. He's got comedy chops, he loves music, he understands music, he's a great musician himself, and he has this unrelenting optimism and energy that I think all of which were essential for uh, really bringing Joe to the screen. It's almost as if you, if there was a computer program where you wanted to feed all these traits into the program and, and ask for like, okay, feed all the traits for the perfect person to play Joe Gardner, it would spit out Jamie Foxx. This is the cat I was telling you about. My old middle school band teacher, Mr. Gardner. Call me Joe, Dorothea, I, I mean, uh, Miss Williams. Uh, it's a pleasure. 
Wow, this is amazing. Oh, Joe is, oh gosh, he is so enamored of Dorothea. He recognizes what a great musician she is. He recognizes the um, opportunity that's before him. He knows he better not mess up, that this may be a one-time thing, that this was a gift that literally landed in his lap that sort of was orchestrated from years previous because he, Joe, uh, was actually the mentor, the, the middle school teacher of, of this drummer, one of his students who's a drummer who, because of his artistry, and wound up in Dorothea's band. And this particular day, someone falls out, and it's time for the, the understudy to go on. What I enjoyed about what Jamie Foxx brought to the role of Joe Gardner was that there's, there's a, a space that musicians often get in that mere mortals don't tend to understand, and that's when you get into a zone. Uh, people tend to tag it as, like, musician's face, you know, whenever, your eyes are closed and you're making these weird faces. That's sort of a, a spiritual experience, you know? That's where you get into the zone. And I love the fact that Jamie's character often gets to uh, go to that place and explain to people why us musicians go to that place where, you know, we make these weird faces and our eyes are closed. We're, we're, we're going to a place, uh, another dimension unknown, only known to other creatives, and that's the zone. Uh, s sorry, I zoned out a little back there. <laughs> Joe Gardner, where have you been? I've been uh, teaching middle school band. Uh, uh, but on the weekends, I... You got a suit? I... Uh... Get a suit, Teach. A good suit. Back here tonight, first show's at 9, sound checks at 7. We'll see how you do. The first writer I worked with was Mike Jones, and Mike and I crafted the world and the basic bones of the story. But as we ran into the specificity of Joe and wanting to know more about this character, we realized, oh, we need somebody who has more to bring from this background. And Kemp, not only a great writer, but he ended up stepping in in so many different ways um, in regard to set design, uh, what kind of posters would be at Joe's house or mom's house and uh, Queens, you know, the authenticity of the neighborhood. Of course, Joe and his passions and where he, you know, what kind of music he listens to and all of this. Uh, we ended up making Kemp co-director because he just was bringing so much to almost every department. Uh, and I think it really ups the whole, uh, the whole film. It's it, the incredible Pixar, you know what I mean? The way they, you know, the way they think four, five, six dimensional, you know, that's, I mean, you think about it, the, the movies that have come before when they deal with these types of subject matters are really, um, really open up different sides of your head. What the movie is telling us and what Joe learns is that there is more to living life than achievement, uh, which is um, a really interesting thing to try to take in. You know, there's just being present and being in the world and making connections and having feelings. There's more to life than checking boxes of things you've wanted to achieve. Jamie, you know, Jamie is just so quick-witted and he, he's so fast on his feet. So he's, he's brought a, just a lot of character, a lot of warmth to Joe. And uh, in the course of the stories, this, you know, different characters take over different bodies. And, uh, but you just enjoy following Jamie uh, in all his machinations in whatever way he shows up. We can't, we can't taste either? All that stuff is in your body. No smell, no taste. Or touch. See? Okay, I get it. <laughs> 